Hello lads, this is uh, Rosie again. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at a series of games that took place early 2018. Now, while early 2018 is admittedly a time for the game that was not the greatest, uh, re uh, Marth was recently asked, according to Fasner, Marth was asked if... Uh, if they were to repeat the experiment, what he thought the results would be now. Uh, and he speculated that the results would be pretty much the same. I'm inclined to agree. So, while this is old, this, while this experiment is old, uh, it's still being talked about. And even Scott Jund acknowledged in one of his videos that this form of gen rushing still exists and is not healthy. So... What, what these people are doing, even though this is kind of old, is still very relevant in the game today, okay? Basically, what these people are doing is a uh, four-man comm D-pip squad, no perks, versus fully decked out red rank killers. Uh, let's take a look. Now, because some people like to, uh, uh, some people like to, like, just scoff at this experiment and throw it under the rug and say this... This, oh, this, this doesn't happen. This isn't real. This is the true balance of Dead by Daylight. And if you've never seen these games, get ready to uh, have a look about what, uh, like what, what DVD is truly like at top level. All of these games were sent to the devs by Marth, and uh, a, a question of when this was going to get fixed, and the devs ignored him, obviously. So let's take a look at what the devs don't. The D-Pip squad. No perks. Really sad. Sound up so I can Suffocation pit. Okay, so immediately the survivors are stuck in at a very fantastic map for them. Again, admittedly, this was back in the time when they did have god loops. So let's see how they handle it. Here she. All right, let's go, boys. All right. Like a very by a hill. Okay. I'm on the killer truck side. Fuck this <laughs> That's a. So as you can see, the game starts with the SWF group immediately spouting off their spawn locations to each other. So immediately, every survivor has information on where everybody is. So they could they could be all the way across the map. So like their map pressure at the beginning of the match is extraordinary. It is extraordinary the amount of information they have already given each other just by saying where they spawned in because their spawn locations have an impact on where the killer spawn locations possibly could be. So as they're spouting out to each other where they go, they have an idea of where the killer might be coming from before the game has even started. So in the first 20 seconds, they already have a significant advantage that you have to account for when you're playing as killer. Truce, she's over on suffocation pit side. Did you see Preston? Exactly, exactly. That's what, what I just said. As soon as, soon as they spouted out their locations, Barth, who is probably one of the best killers in the world but isn't talked about enough, said that she's on the suffocation pit side. We already know where she is. Uh, it yeah. doesn't look prestige to me. Okay. All right, I'm working on one out in the boonies by a suffocation pit. Maybe hundreds. I'm a killer shock. Uh, the basement is inside the suffocation pit. Okay, so now they know where basement is. So now, because, they, because of their map pressure, every, everybody already knows where the basement is. So they already know if they're getting chased at the pit, if they get hit, it's probably wise to go away to prevent this form of snowball. So they already, in the first 42 seconds, know exactly what their plan of attack is. Uh, Gekido, yes, our whole team is perkless. He's on me. No ruin, GG, Huntress. Yeah, it's over. Halfway done. The game is street dead now. Hi Huntress, how you doing over there by the suffocation pit? Loop de loop the rocky rock, loop de loop the rocky rock. <laughs> I'm just watching it from over here. <laughs> yeah, she's still chasing me. Yeah, remember Mark, be careful. If you change targets, don't give free if you don't have something. One. First jet popped at a minute and 35, 34 seconds. Oh no, I ain't worried about it. Yeah. Play very 
save. Second gem pops at a minute and 48 seconds. Well, this game's officially over now. You're good. Third gem pops at a minute and 54 seconds. That what, 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 what more do you people need? What more do you people need? They were all spread out and gen efficient. This time didn't take a nerf at all. So the only thing that's kind of slightly nerfed here is the map. This is still a very relevant result. So here we go. Three gens in the first minute and 54 seconds of the game. And now, like, do you see what we're talking about when we say optimal gen speed is around 2 minutes 30 seconds? It's around what it is. Okay. My turn? Yep, your turn. My turn! My turn! <laughs> Get stunned, buddy. Now, you can see the Huntress kind of swinging and whiffing. Well, here, here's, here, here's what you have to keep in mind. Uh, we're at the red ranks, right? Uh, she hasn't hit anybody, and there's three gens done in the first two minutes of the game. She's getting impatient. And you know what? How can you blame her? How can you blame her? How can you realistically blame her for getting impatient when the, the game is 60% over? And now remember, oh, people like Otofu legit think that this early game shit doesn't actually matter. Like, in, in, in Otofu's words, this hunter should be able to just down all four of these high-level SWF players within seconds of each other to create snowball pressure, all when there's two gens left after the first two minutes of the game. And two of the survivors are already halfway across the map near the shack, and she has no idea where they are. And, and they have another gen that's probably almost primed. My turn, let's go. Spudmar, uh, in front of the uh, killer shark, uh, inside the maze, uh, the gen there. Ooh, okay, she's got the exhaustion. I'm working on one already. All right. Port away now. My gen's at 25. Mine is 40. So they have 60% of a gen almost done. Sad part is this isn't even the fastest time I've seen at Suffocation Pit. Early drop in the pallets, because people like to criticize, I, I know one pe the thing that people throw against True Talent is about how he just throws down resources. When you, every time you get a generator done, it creates, like, extra time. So you can just throw down a lot of these resources because you haven't burned a lot of the map out. It creates situations for you to just throw down pallets. You don't have to fucking think about it sometimes. You're allowed to just throw down pallets, especially with hyperactive gen speeds like this. Yeah, I think she lost me. Nice. If you need heals, I'm behind water tower. Okay, she I'm um, already knows where to go to get the heal. No empathy, no perk slot to do anything about it. Just just comms. I'm behind the water tower. Like this is what uh, this is what optimal four man can do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in a spot to where she won't find me. Yes. Yeah. Nice. She's probably going back towards water tower. I hear someone working on a gen. Fourth gen pops at three minutes, 12 seconds. Please. One to go. I'm sticking in. Fourth gen pops at three minutes, 27 seconds. And then you factor in some of this time at the beginning. The game started at around six seconds, so about three minutes, 20 seconds, all the gens are done. But this killer is just bad, right? This killer just can't pressure the map effectively. Do you see why this doesn't hold up? And no, you would not have done better. Don't even type that fucking crap in the comments. You would not have done any better than this poor person did. Because this is what the game looks like, okay? If you're not playing against this, that's not, that's not good analysis. You're not playing good survivors. This is what a basic four-man swift can actually do. This is what this is what their power level is. You not being able to stop this has not a referendum on you. It's a referendum on our shitty development team to just ignore a problem like this. And guess what? We're only just getting started. There's a hundred of these. I'm sticking it. 
Yeah, so the uh, actually no, excuse me. It didn't even take them three minutes twenty. It's th three minutes tw three twenty-five, about three twenty-five seconds to to pop the gens. Yeah. To the doors. Yep. I'm getting the one oh, by one stuff. And then the killer DC. Like, 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 what, like, what, like, what do you guys like? What? Like, do you see how clear this is? Like how, how much, how many different languages, how many different sayings, how many different expressions do we have to coat this as? This is the true Dead by Daylight, okay? You would not have done better. You would have probably done worse. And by the way, the killer was rank one. This is just what the game looks like when you play four competent players. We have a ranking system that doesn't allow for that at the current time. But this is what the game truly is. And as an MMR system comes into the game and pairs players like this together more often, even in a solo queue group, you're going to see that this game is in trouble and does still need even more adjusting.